Ever wondered what you would hit if you dug down and just kept on digging? If you said bedrock, then you've been playing too much Minecraft. In reality, you'd find yourself digging through the different layers our planet is made of. I mean, obviously you'd also be dead, but you get the idea. The Earth is split into layers, and what goes on in these layers is key to understanding how tectonic hazards like earthquakes and volcanoes happen on the surface. Okay, so there are many layers that make up the planet, but as we like to keep things simple, we'll break them down to just four. Let's start from the outside and work our way in. This is the crust, a layer of solid rock that makes up the surface of the planet. Some of the crust, known as the oceanic crust, sits under the world's ocean and is about five kilometers thick. The other type is continental crust, named because there is no water on top of it, it's just rock all the way up to the surface and is about 35 kilometers thick on average. That might sound like a lot, but you're about to find out that it's actually extremely thin compared to the other layers. Heading deeper into the planet, we come to the next layer, the mantle. Like the crust, this layer is made of rock, but because temperatures are now much hotter, we're talking 4000 degrees celsius, the rock is melted into liquid, which we call magma. The mantle is also the thickest layer of the planet, extending to a depth of around 2900 kilometers. I told you the crust was thin. Further in still, and we reach the outer core. Instead of rock, this layer is made of metal, mostly iron and nickel to be exact. The 6000 degree temperatures here are hot enough to melt the metal down into liquid, and it goes down to a depth of roughly 5200 kilometers. The deepest layer, found right in the center of the planet, is called the inner core. It's made of the same metals as the outer core, mainly iron and nickel, and is a little bit hotter than the outer core. Unlike the outer core, the inner core is actually solid metal. We can explain why this is in the comments if anybody wants to know. Okay, so now you know a little bit about the four layers inside Earth, but it's not just about understanding what these layers are like, we also have to know what they're doing. there is a process going on inside the mantle called convection. This is really important to understand, so let us explain it a little bit more. Convection is the process where warm things rise and cold things sink. A good example of this is a lava lamp. The light at the bottom of the glass tube heats up the blobs of wax, causing them to rise up within the water. They reach the top of the tube and cool down eventually getting cool enough to sink back down towards the heat source, and the cycle starts again. Well, exactly the same thing is happening in the mantle. The heat comes from the core, but some parts of the mantle get a bit more heat than others. In the hotter parts, the warm magma begins to rise upwards towards the surface, where it then starts to cool down. It then spreads outwards, eventually getting cool enough to sink back down. It flows back towards the area it originally rose up from, and warms up as it does so, eventually getting warm enough to rise up again, and the whole process repeats. This whole circular cycle is called a convection cell. Don't let the speed of this diagram fool you though, these convection cycles take millions of years to complete inside of our planet. We should also talk about the effect this convection has on the crust. In the places where the magma has reached the surface, new crust is formed, as some of the magma has cooled down enough to solidify. As the new crust pushes up, it forces the existing crust outwards which starts to make it move. We call this ridge push. From there, the crust is carried along by the convection currents beneath it until it is old and dense enough to sink back down into the planet, dragging the crust into the mantle in a process called slab pull. This process is happening all over the planet in several different places, causing the crust to be torn apart into lots of different slabs of rock, all constantly being pushed around by convection currents underneath them. We have a name for these different slabs of rocks, 
They're called tectonic plates. And this is what those tectonic plates look like if you show them on a map. Some of them, like the Pacific Plate, are huge, whereas others, like the Scotia Plate, are smaller. Some are mostly covered by water, making them oceanic plates, and others are not, so they are continental plates. Remember, these plates are all moving in different directions thanks to the mantle convection happening underneath them. For example, the North American Plate and the Eurasian Plate are moving away from each other, which means the boundary between them is where magma is rising up and spreading outwards, moving them apart whilst creating new crust. As you'll see in our next video, the real action happens along the edges of the tectonic plates. Stay tuned for that. And that just about sums it up for this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit the little bell dinghy if you want to be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. You've been listening to The Mountain Man and watching the work of Michael Deluxe. And remember, keep it simple.